couple of interns uh, on my radio program, and I'm not going to I'm not going to out them because one goes to Columbia and the other one goes to the uh, uh, to NYU, and they're like, "Can we be in a you know Can we be in the Glenn Beck Witness Protection Program? We don't want anybody to know we're working for you." And they told me they said we didn't even know that it was uh, President's Day today. We knew about Valentine's Day because there's signs up all about how not to get venereal diseases all last week, but nothing about President, uh, President's Day. I remember Washington's birthday and Lincoln's birthday. Now President's Day, I mean, I would expect kids to say, well, I, is, it, is it Barack Obama's birthday? No, Abraham Lincoln. Louis Lehrman, uh, presidential historian and author of Lincoln at Peoria, The Turning Point. I want to spend a couple of minutes on Abraham Lincoln today. With Ian, thank you so much. You are, you are the voice and authority on, on Lincoln. Um, help, me out on, uh, help me out on Lincoln. If he saw what we were doing today, if he saw the country today, what would he say? Well, he would have been astonished uh, by two things. Uh, today, he would tell us that this is not President's Day. <laughs> but that this is a statute of the United States Congress making today the celebration of Washington's birthday. And that even the 1968 statute, uh, which updated the 1879 statute, insisted that the third Monday of February would be Washington's birthday. And this is because Lincoln revered the founders. Now, when you say that, because let me just push back a bit, because you say that he revered the Constitution. I've read both sides of it. I think, I, well, I know I do. I come down on Lincoln's side, that Lincoln was the guy who saved us, and he did revere the Constitution. He was, he was a man in progress. You know, when he first came in, I have no intention nor any desire to free the slaves, and that changed as he, he went along. And I think, he, I think he really, truly found himself, agree or disagree so far. Oh, I agree that he, he did not have an intention to free the slaves because he had no power having uh, uh, given an oath of office that's prescribed for him in the Constitution to defend, protect, and preserve the United States Constitution. Okay. And that meant that he did not have the authority to change the arrangements that the Constitution had designed. There are some people that say that Lincoln was, and I'm not one of these people, that Lincoln was one of the, the guys who really caused this whole mess. That he was the first one that put the nail in the, in the coffin, beginning to drive nails in the coffin of the uh, Constitution because he said, I'm gonna be a big state government, not an individual state. State with an S, uh, a capital S, not a small S. You agree or disagree? I disagree. Uh, Lincoln uh, embraced the rights of states uh, as ordained by the Constitution. The states had certain rights delegated to them by the Constitution and the federal government had certain uh, rights delegated to them. Okay. The, the rub came when the states wanted to persist in expanding slavery into the territories of right. the United States. Right. But Article 4, Section 3 of the Constitution of the United States gives the power to the federal government to prescribe the rules for the territories of the United States. And the federal government from the time of General Washington, even before, tried to put slavery in the course of ultimate put extinction. It yeah. put the it Northwest up. Ordinance prohibited yeah. slavery in the Northwest Territory. So Lincoln believed he was following the founders and right. putting slavery in okay. the course well, of extinction. I agree with that extinction. 100%. Now let me take it one step further when we come back. Hang on just a sec. with uh, Lewis Lerman, a presidential historian and author of this book, Lincoln at Peoria, The Turning Point. Um, uh, by the way, I have to tell you something. As, a, as an audience, you should know this. Um, last week, I mentioned three books on the air. I said, everybody should, this is a must read. Everybody should read this. I had this guy on and uh, talked about this, said it was the most evil book I've ever read. Friday, all three of these were in the top ten. This one's still, I think, number one on, uh, on Amazon.com. This one is, I don't even know where, but these were all three in the top ten. Don't let anybody tell you that, oh, you watch Glenn Beck, oh, you're just a dumb, dumb, dummy. This, book, this uh, audience reads more books than I think any other audience I, I've ever witnessed. Now this is the next one here, Lincoln at Peoria. Okay. If California has to be bailed out, how, how is it that states who have lived within their means would have to bail them out and bring themselves down and just collapse themselves? Because you're not gonna be able to bail out California. How is the Constitution a suicide pact in that way? Because this is what Lincoln settled. There's no way out. There's no way out. If the government becomes oppressive or if the government says, we're going in this direction, how is it the people themselves in one state can say, you know what, we're not doing that. We don't want to do that as we the people of the state. The, the Constitution provides that 
If you believe that deeply, just as Lincoln did in 1854 when he began his anti-slavery campaign, which eventuated in his uh, presidential election, campaigns should be mounted in Idaho, and they should be mounted in Pennsylvania, and they should be mounted in all the solvent states, and by inspired uh, individuals, uh, not unlike the passion you uh, exhibit in describing the problem. And the Constitution also provides that every four years we can replace the president. Every two years we can replace our congressmen. Every six years we can replace our senators with ballots uh, and, and not bullets. Abraham Lincoln is a fascinating, I love reading about him. I'm reading um, a book now on um, um, uh, Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln oh, yes. and how similar they were. I mean, it's just a fascinating story. Uh, you read about Abraham Lincoln's life as a child, tragic. You, you see the, the end of his life, tragic. Was he a happy guy at all? He was an ambitious man uh, and principled who was ambitious to make a, uh, make a, a, a name for himself, a reputation of honor. And from the earliest years, he got the name uh, Honest, Honest Abe, Abe because he, he, he developed his own character. The, why do we have the, you know, the, the you know, I walked, you know, I walked five miles to return a penny or whatever, when, when he has real stories that are so good, like, for instance, when he broke off his engagement. With Mary Todd, well, that was an that was an affair of uh, honor. He broke off his engagement with Mary Todd. Uh, there's a dispute over what the reason was. It may have been another woman whom he had a, a profound affection for. It made him so miserable that he, uh, his melancholy drove him to leave the legislature and not attend the legislative sessions in 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 Springfield. One year later, he married Mary Todd out of a sense of honor, and it was not. A, t a very happy marriage. Back in a minute. Happy birthday, George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. Thank you, sir. You know, I have to tell you, to fix America, it's, it, we're not going to find just a politician to fix it. We need to fix ourselves. Um, I, I announced today, and tickets went on sale today, that I'm doing a, a special program. First one is March 27th at the UCF Arena in Orlando, and then April 10th at the Jobbing Arena in Phoenix, Arizona. It's called an American Revival. You can find out all the ticket information at glenbeck.com. It's about faith, hope, and charity. You're going you're gonna to fix it. It's, it's teaching the truth, the truth of who we are, where we came from, what we're really facing. This is not a 90-minute a show that I do. This is a, an all-day event. You and me together all day Saturday. You're going to get up early in the morning and we'll be there until dinner time. Check out all the information at glenbeck.com. From New York, good night, America.